This is WVUE Channel 8, New Orleans. Jim Bailey, Karen Grant, Jim Gallagher on sports, and meteorologist Nancy Russo. This is Nightbeat. Good evening, everyone. The local economy is at an all-time low, and crime is up 18% over the first nine months of this year. Doug Darby reports that many people who live in New Orleans are changing their lifestyles in order to cope with this rising crime. It's citywide and it's frightening. The New Orleans Police Department attributes the recent rise in crime to the economy and to juveniles who learn new criminal techniques before the police get schooled on the old ones. Whether it's uptown or downtown, residents are afraid to go out at night, and that's alone or in a group. Now that the holiday season is upon us, the apprehension gets worse. We make sure that we uh, have lots of lights and friends. If I'm coming home alone, we follow each other in cars. And uh, if I'm coming in alone by myself, my husband usually keeps everything well lit on the outside, and I make sure I have my keys in hand. Everyone agrees it shouldn't have to be that way. But Phyllis Wagner-Bolger says it's a sign of the times. Just last Wednesday night, one of her neighbors was shot in the driveway of his home after returning with his wife from a Christmas party. Miss Wagner-Bolger says it's time people realize that it will take money for better police protection and a better educational system to hold the lid on crime. We have to pay for adequate education in order that we don't um, put more fertilizer on crime. On the night beat, Doug Darby, Channel 8 News, Uptown. A New Orleans City policeman was wounded in a shootout in the city overnight. Today, the man who police believe fired the shot turned the gun on himself and ended his life. Officer Stanley Burkhardt is resting in good condition tonight with a shoulder wound. He was shot when he and his partner stopped a man suspected of shooting a gun through the window of a convenience store. We surrounded the house. He tried to hide behind the shed, and he couldn't hide behind the shed because there was one on the roof over here, one back there, and one right here in front of him. And he just finally turned the gun on himself. He wouldn't want to give up. He just shot himself in the head. Investigators are still trying to identify the dead gunman. A standoff at the special session in Baton Rouge today. Lawmakers in the Senate refused to consider restoring any budget cuts, and the House wouldn't reverse form and approve higher taxes. Senate Finance Committee decided to sit on bills that would restore $46 million in public school cuts and transfer $117 million to highway money. The House voted down a 3% tax on soft drinks that would raise about $7 million each year. Is the special session working? That's the question many lawmakers are asking in the midst of all the bickering. They're trying to deal with a projected 1987 deficit of $165 million. State Representative Charles Jones says legislators are doing the best they can. I think we're being productive, and I say that as honestly as I possibly can. Uh, we may not reach a consensus, we may not have the votes to do the things we want to do, but we are doing two things as I see it. Number one, we're putting the measures that, that the legislature feels will solve the problem in addition to what the governor proposed on the table. And number two, we're telling the people of Louisiana, these are your choices. One issue lawmakers plan to tackle this coming week is the controversy over the dumping of gypsum into the Mississippi River. This weekend, a committee passed a resolution urging the Department of Environmental Quality to oppose the dumping. Some experts believe that gypsum causes cancer. Another American is under arrest in Nicaragua on espionage charges. The Nicaraguan government says it has arrested former Ohio lawmaker Sam Hall. When Hall was taken into custody Friday, he reportedly had maps in his shoes and said he worked for a spy organization. Hall is the brother of Ohio Congressman Tony Hall. A new poll shows most Americans don't believe the key players in the Iran arms deal are telling all they know. 74% of those questioned think President Reagan is holding back some facts. 65% of the respondents think the scandal will end up hurting the president's overall image and his credibility to the public. And Nancy is here now to let us know what's going on outside. Nancy. Well, I thought the rain was going to be with us tomorrow morning. Right now we are watching rain as it is beginning to move in on the city. Actually, rain will be with us in the next couple of hours. Most of it's going to be light, and we'll tell you more about the forecast coming up a little bit later. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Coming up, Mothers Against Drunk Driving begin their holiday campaign. And the historic flight of the Voyager is underway. Stay with us. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. This holiday 
season, serve the very best at any gathering. All white meat chicken tenders from Burger King. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. La, 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 la. Here's a great idea for Christmas. Gift certificates from Burger King. 50 cents each or a book for $5. This is a Burger King town. A great way to say happy holidays from Burger King. Christmas is a special time across the country and at Kmart because you can save on gifts like this West Bend High Performance Food Processor, sale priced at just $36.88. Or make someone's Christmas special with a Kmart gift like First Alert's Rechargeable Ready Light for $19.88 or Compact Rechargeable Flashlight just $9.88 after manufacturer's rebate. It's America's favorite time of year at America's favorite store, Kmart, the saving place. It's no secret, today's copper top battery makes yesterday's look, well, not too swift. In fact, it's so completely improved, it'll last up to 30% longer than the ones we made just two years ago. It'll keep going long after our old battery is dead in the water. Today's Duracell. No battery lasts longer. Your New Orleans Buick dealers announce a new program with monthly payments on 1987 Buicks even lower than in the 2.9% campaign. A new Skylock goes for only $199 a month on this new GMAC lease plan. A Century for only $219. Get cash back for your old car and drive out in a 1987 luxury LeSabre, equipped the way most people want it, for only $233 a month at your New Orleans Buick Connection. Crown in Metairie, Eagle on the West Bank, and Heritage in Gentilly. Trying to keep drivers alive for the holidays. That's the purpose of National Drunk and Drugged Driver Awareness Week. It has the stamp of approval of the Congress, the endorsement of the mayor, and the safety of holiday revelers at heart. It's a kickoff, actually, to the uh, holiday season. And uh, I think people do try to curb their drinking a lot more now than they have in the past. National Drunk and Drugged Driver Awareness Week is in its fifth year. And each year, the number of alcohol-related deaths on the highways drops. Last year, there were just 25 deaths over the holidays in this state, compared with more than 30 the year before. The holidays are particularly important because people find occasion to drink at parties and don't always think about the consequences of the trip home. That's why this year, the sponsors of Awareness Week are asking motorists to tie a red ribbon around the door handle on the driver's side of the car. It's actually a ribbon for hope because we care. We are hoping that we will have a less violent future when it comes to drinking and driving. Magdolf adds that the ribbons will serve not only as a reminder to the driver, but as an exhibit of concern about public safety. An historic takeoff today at Edwards Air Force Base. No, it wasn't a voyage into outer space, but if it works, it'll go down in the record books just the same. An experimental aircraft called the Voyager took off today for an unprecedented try at circling the world without refueling. The flight is scheduled to last about 10 days. During the takeoff, one of the wings got scraped, but officials don't know if that will affect the flight. Well, Nancy says there will be some umbrella weather on the way before long. Nancy's up next with the forecast. Stay tuned. Reaching every area of heart care. We are the Gulf South Heart Center at East Jefferson General Hospital, working with your physician. Cinderella Catering and Cinderella Grand Ballroom are the perfect choice for any occasion. Greg Crafton and Consultants can help you plan your next gala event down to the last meticulous detail. Cinderella Catering is proud to serve you at the location of your choice or plan to have your event at the new elegant Cinderella Grand Ballroom. Call 733-2828, Cinderella Catering and Cinderella Grand Ballroom, where memories live happily ever after. A coat of paint works wonders, you can cover your mistakes. At Helm Paint and Supply, we've got what it takes. We'll steer you right. Yes, sir. We'll steer you right. Make it easy on yourself. All you need is on our shelves. We never seem to have enough time in today's world 
Your quick copy printing center can save you time and money by giving you fast quality service and all your printing needs at a price you can afford. Whether it be business cards, business forms, letterheads, envelopes, or brochures, the professionals at Quick Copy Printing are nearby to serve you quickly and efficiently. Quick Copy Printing Center is where time is on your side. Come on, quick copy, save time and money. That's quick with a capital K. No change tonight. The change is going to come later, you say? No, actually it's going to come earlier than I thought. I thought the rain was going to be with us tomorrow and I went outside and found out a little bit differently. You go out that. a little bit and you may get wet. That's how you always find out. Step outside <laughs> the door. Rain is just upon our doorstep. Let's take a look at our satellite picture because it's showing plenty of cloud cover all across Louisiana. In fact, the entire south today is covered in a great deal of cloud cover and all of that Coming up from Texas, southwesterly flow bringing in all the clouds. Tonight the lower clouds are with us and that means so is the rain. Let's take a look at our radar loop because it's going to show you where the rains were if you were with us earlier. We didn't have much showing up on radar, but tonight it really did start to expand and you can see it as it pushes here, to actually here toward us on the south shore. The area starts to expand, not really any heavy rainfall. Most of this is generally light rain, but it does start to push in on the city, and most of the North Shore has been in the rain tonight. This is a look at live radar, and it is showing a batch of rain, mainly on the North Shore, out over Lake Pontchartrain, extending all the way back toward Baton Rouge. Now, what I'm going to do is go in a little bit on the city to show you what actually is happening and elevate the antenna to get rid of some of the false return. And as you see this picture, most of this in the center is false return. We're not really in on the shower activity yet, but out over Lake Pontchartrain, some very light rain going on there. You can see some yellows, though, up on the North Shore indicating some moderate rainfall. And the bad news is that it looks like the rain is going to be with us for the next couple of days. So the rain already is beginning to move in on Kenner. Actually, it is raining out there right now. Let's take a look at the way it was earlier today because I hope you enjoy these temperatures because tomorrow's temperatures are not going to be nearly as cool. On the North Shore earlier this morning, all the low temperatures were down in the 30s, 37 degrees coming from Macomb, 40 degrees coming from Baton Rouge. Here on the South Shore, we were in the 40s, 44 coming from the airport in Kenner, 44 at uh, Lakefront Airport. Afternoon high temperature, 61 over on the Gulf Coast in Biloxi, 61 also at Slidell. They had one of the cool spots this morning at 39 degrees. Almanac today coming from Audubon Park. This is the way it was specifically. 61 degrees the high temperature, 44 the low. No rainfall yet, but that is going to change shortly. Now, if you think temperatures today were on the cool side, actually this is typical December weather. If you saw those normals, we were just about at seasonal normal. Out at the airport in Kenner right now, though, the temperature is standing at 55 degrees. Again, they are experiencing light rain. Humidity 83 percent. Winds northeasterly right now, 13 miles per hour and the barometer is on the rise. Now what's causing all the problems? It's the same old story that we have been looking at. And again, nothing at the surface. The wind's coming up out of the southwest. It's just going to keep bringing in the cloudiness. And this pattern's going to hold, it looks like, right on through Wednesday. As we put the frontal positions on this map, there's really not a whole lot taking place. High pressure across the west, high pressure also across the east. That's the high that we've been talking about with the very chilly temperatures up in the northeast earlier this morning. Many of the temperatures there were in the single digits. But you notice that things are really starting to warm up tonight because many of the temperatures in the northeast tonight are in the 20s and 30s, and that's really not too bad. Here's our forecast map for tomorrow. It shows all the moisture from Texas beginning to push in toward Louisiana. We'll be in the moisture, the clouds, and the rain looks like right on through Wednesday. Here's our forecast for tonight, mostly cloudy. We're going to have some scattered rain around the area. Low temperatures are only going to be in the 50s. Actually, we were at 55 degrees, and that's really just about as cold as it's going to get with north and easterly winds at uh, 5 to 10 miles per hour. For tomorrow, it's going to be a cloudy day, a little bit warmer. Temperatures will be in the 60s. Temperatures will stay down a bit because of the rainfall. We're going to have scattered showers around the area with easterly winds at 8 to 12 miles per hour. Here is a look at Tuesday. Cloudy, warm, and wet, making it even a little bit worse because temperatures should be in the 70s. Low temperatures will be in the 50s. The marine forecast for tomorrow, very rough out there. Seas running 4 to 6 feet. And here's a look at the tides. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the tides. No, it sure wasn't. <laughs> a little surprise there. Okay, thank you, Nancy, and uh, be sure and take your Bob Brick umbrella home oh, with you I'm tonight. You'll need it in the morning. Do that. Okay, thanks. 
Immediately after the newscast tonight, we're going to repeat today's Neighborhood Newsmakers program, as always. The topic tonight will be the trip that Mary Lou McCall and I made to Yugoslavia to cover the reported apparitions of the Virgin Mary there. Also, Mary Lou and I will be speaking two times this week. On Monday, we'll be in Bay St. Louis at Our Lady of the Gulf Church. That starts at 7 p.m. And on Tuesday, we will be in reserve at St. Peter's Church in the time there, 7.30 p.m. After that, we are going to take a week off for Christmas and much a much-deserved rest. <laughs> When we come back tonight, though, Jim Gallagher in the day in sports. He will have a complete report from Atlanta on the Saints' win over the Falcons today. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. You just said the magic words, and look what you did. And look what you can save at Toys R Us this holiday season. You can fly through your neighborhood on the Nash Woody 29-inch skateboard with pro-style kicktail, only $19.97. Awesome. Or test your skill on the Nash Executioner 29-inch skateboard with poured urethane wheels and hot designs. Just $49.94 at your skateboard headquarters, Toys R Us. It's the world's biggest Toys R Us go! Experience the dawn of something more. The new steak and ale menu. Untamed blackened steak. Exotic fish. Sensuous pasta. Captivating new salads. A revolution of the senses for a very sensible price. The new steak and ale. Still the classics you've always enjoyed. With 20 new items under $9. All because you have a right to something more. If last-minute Christmas shopping has you tossing and turning... One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock! Stop worrying. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock! We're going to rock! Around ten o'clock... Zare is open 24 hours a day until Christmas Eve. So you can save round the clock on all kinds of Christmas gifts. But hurry, time is running out. So get into Zare today. Or tonight. taste of revenge. Boy, you gotta like it, especially if you're a big Saints fan, because Atlanta just smoked them at the beginning of the year, yeah. and it's always nice when you can rub it Come in the dirt. Yeah, you can rub it in a thing, even things Have up a little, little fun, that's right. Well, they say revenge is a dish best served cold. Well, it was pretty chilly in Atlanta this afternoon. The Saints gained some revenge, and more importantly, they gained a victory over the Falcons. It wasn't very pretty, but the Saints aren't about to complain about a win right now. Julius Lionel Bienvenu was in Atlanta. He has this look back at the ball game. The Saints got going towards the end of the first quarter. Dave Wilson hits his old roommate, Hobie Brenner, and Brenner gets 18 yards down to the Atlanta 25. Five plays later, Atlanta blitzed, and Wilson found Eric Martin over the middle. Seven yards and a touchdown, and the Saints led 7-0. That's my adjustment. I, if, mm -hmm. if the guy blitzed over me, I slide adjust, and I run a quick slant, and it was wide open. In the second quarter, Dave Wehmer gives it back to the offense when he picks off Turk Schonert's pass at the Saints 47. I was trying to keep my eye concentrated on the ball because I didn't know if he was going to tip it or if I was going to have to go up and get it. And it, and it, it uh, came off one of his hands and, you know, it's right into mine. The Saints drove it to the Falcons 33 and then on fourth down with 33 seconds left in the half, Morton Anderson came in to try a 50-yard field goal but he never got a chance to kick it. Joel Hilgenberg's snap goes through the hands of holder Brian Hansen, and the Falcons had the ball. I got a hand on it, and uh, I should have caught it. I, what about no excuses. The Falcons quickly moved it into Saints territory. Schoener goes to Arthur Cox for 24 yards down to the Saints 28, but again it was Waymer who came up with a big play. He picks off Schoener's pass to end the Falcons' drive. So with Waymer's interception, the defense came through, and the Saints had a 7-0 lead at the half. But in the third quarter, the Falcons finally did get it into the end zone. Schoenert made it look easy. He finds a wide open Ken Wisenhunt for a three yard touchdown. However, the extra point hit the left upright. It was no good, and the Saints still had the lead seven to six. Things went downhill from there for the Saints. On their next possession, Dave Wilson is intercepted by David Crudup, and Crudup returns it 29 yards to the Saints 40. And as the fourth quarter began, the Falcons had moved to the Saints three but they would not score this time. Ricky Jackson on the blitz, he knocks the ball loose, and Frank Warren recovers for the Saints. 
The Falcons came back the next time they had it with a fake punt on fourth and nine. Aubrey Matthews looks like he'll be stopped for a loss, but Johnny Poe misses him, and 12 yards later, Atlanta had a first down. The Saints defense once again came through to stop the Falcons, and they settled for a 43-yard field goal from Ali Haji Sheik, and that gave Atlanta a 9-7 lead. The Saints now had a little over five minutes left, and for a change, the offense came through. First, Wilson goes to Eric Martin for 28 yards, and then he found Kelvin Edwards for 24. And then at the six, Wilson took it himself on the bootleg. Touchdown Saints, and with a minute 55 now left, they were back on top 14 to nine. Hopefully the perfect way to run that is where there's nobody out there. Everybody's going for the fake, but this guy was standing out there, and I kind of gave him a little, I just kind of acted like I was going to throw it, and he might have looked for the ball, and I just kind of moved inside, and, uh, and he missed me. But wait, it wasn't over yet. The Falcons came alive, and with the help of the Saints' prevent defense, Schonert moved them from their own 20 to the Saints' five, where they stood with 10 seconds left. I was scared to death. I was scared to death. You know, uh, hey, I've seen it happen too many times. Coach, never fear. The Saints' defense was here. Ricky Jackson blitzed again. He smothered Schonert for a six-yard loss. Now, in the confusion that followed, Schonert got the ball to Charlie Brown. He took it in for the touchdown. But the officials ruled the clock had run out before the snap. And the Saints escaped from Atlanta with a win number seven. The final Saints 14, Falcons 9. You know, when they got down there on the five, I was a little worried. But, you know, we came out with the win. And we would deserve, it's about time we got one of these. You know, the other teams have gotten them for the last two weeks, and it was our turn. Lino Bienvenu, Channel 8 Sports in Atlanta. I think Dave Waymer knows what he's talking about. So the Saints win at 14 to 9 the final. The Saints are now 7 and 8 on the year. They finish the season next week on the road against the Minnesota Vikings. Well, the race for Vinny Testaverde is officially on. The Tampa Bay Bucks may have lost today, but in the process they actually gained some ground in the race for that number 1 pick. Bucks were actually trying to win this game this afternoon. Steve DeBerg hits Calvin McGee for the score. They bring out the cannons to celebrate. These people are foolish because they need to lose this game. Fortunately, they did. Green Bay's Gary Ellis scores. Packers win the game 21-7 the final. Bucks are now 2-13 on the year. Indianapolis Colts won their second game in a row. So now these two teams are tied for the worst record in the league. A Tampa Bay loss next week, and they get Vinny. Other scores, it was the Giants over St. Louis 27-7. San Francisco just edged New England. Phil Philadelphia beat Dallas, and that knocks Dallas out of the playoffs this year. While the Cowboys were missing the playoffs, the Cleveland Browns clinched their second straight AFC Central title. Of course, the quarterback for Cleveland is Bernie Kosar. He had a big day this afternoon. Here he goes down the sideline, a 66-yard completion. Now, this set up one score by Cleveland, but Kosar continued to have a good day. This time, he goes back to pass. Once again, he's looking to dial a little long distance. Here he connects on a 47-yard touchdown with Webster Slaughter. Browns go on to win it 34-3, and they clinch the AFC Central title. Kansas City edged the Raiders. It was Seattle over San Diego, 34-24. Miami in overtime over the Rams, and Houston beat Minnesota 23-10. Remember, the Vikings are the Saints' next opponent next Sunday. For the last time LSU and Georgia Tech met, it was for the NCAA's Southeast Regional Semifinals. The stakes weren't as high tonight, but don't try telling that to the Tigers. Finally had Nikita Wilson back in uniform after all of his great problems. He was back today playing pretty well. Early on in this game, Anthony Wilson gets the steal. He goes all the way in for the lay-in, a pretty play, and he gets the three-pointer. Georgia Tech stayed close, though. Tom Hammonds hits the turnaround jumper. But Nikita came back in the second half. He finally warmed up. He hits the nice turnaround right here. He played very well. Big Jose Vargas, he's a key for LSU. He comes down with a serious dunk. Georgia Tech was still pretty close in this ballgame, but Anthony Wilson drills the jumper from the outside. LSU held on to win it 52-49, to the final score. Well, tomorrow night, the UNO Privateers are back in action. They're at home on the lakefront to take on Mankato State. Privateers need a win after yesterday's tough loss at Houston. Well, it was a tough weekend in the Superdome for our local high school football teams. Both the Slidell Tigers and the John Curtis Patriots came in wanting a state championship of their own. They both came out of the weekend disappointed. The Curtis Patriots were after their ninth state title. Sophomore quarterback Billy Duncan started in place of injured Steve McCready. After spending the first half on his back, he came through in the third quarter. Thrilling 9-7, he lays out a strike for Todd Castleberry. But Castleberry missed the field goal on the drive, and the Pats could get no closer in the fourth quarter. Hopefully we're going to take this game and grow from it. Uh, not just uh, Billy Duncan, but the other football players were on the field. And, uh, if you take a loss any other way, then I think you need to go do something else, sell insurance or something. You know, you, you need to take a loss and build from it. <clears throat> We're going to try to do that. JT Curtis probably summed it all up for the Slidell Tigers as well. They had waited 40 years for their chance at another state title. Rustin and Slidell were so evenly matched, they finished regulation play tied at 24-all. 
but after Runston scored on their first possession in overtime, Slidell got their chance. On second and goal, though, Brad Stewart fumbles the ball. The Bearcats recover it, and they also recover the state championship. They won it 31-24, the final score. Obviously a tough weekend for our guys. Exactly. Thank you, Jimbo. Still ahead, a creative birthday bash at the Museum of Art. We will celebrate with you when we come back in a moment. Jingle bells, hey, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Happy holidays, Vern. Now Brian is offering a once-in-a-lifetime tax loss savings on leasing. Save over $3,100 when you lease a new 87 Caprice for only $270 a month. Loaded with air, power steering and brakes, power windows, automatic, AM FM stereo, V8 engine, white walls, tinted glass and more. Or save $76 a month on a new 87 Celebrity or take your choice at Brian Chevy Town, 8200 Airline Metairie. A little bit of scratch is all you need. Aline Cunningham has been called the psychic advisor to the stars. And now, I'll predict for you. Aline's personalized daily horoscope tells you everything you need to know with amazing accuracy. Love, money, success, health. Will your dreams come true? Write down your special telephone number. This could be your very special day. Call now for your personal reading. Your daily horoscope from psychic Aline Cunningham. Call now. Days at 4.30 on WVUE Channel 8. Hi gang, I'm going to tell you how you can win a four-day, three-night trip to the sunny Bahamas. And it's real easy if you drink 7-Up and watch me on Channel 8, you could be a winner. Just go to any store where 7-Up is sold and look for this display. Then send your name, address, and phone number to Channel 8, and each night at 6 p.m. we'll pick a daily winner. And on Tuesday, December 30th, those daily winners will be eligible for a grand prize trip to the Bahamas. So hurry to a store where 7-Up is sold and win the big giveaway right here on Channel 8. Nancy's here to tell us if you've won one of those umbrellas, you'll be in good shape for heading back to work tomorrow. Oh, that is right. And if you're heading to work tomorrow, you might want to leave just a little bit early because rain is already moving in across the area. Also, we have quite a bit of cloud cover. The rains are going to be with us with, for over the next couple of days. Tomorrow morning, temperatures will be in the 50s. Karen? The number of birthday candles on a cake usually is a pretty good clue about the age of the celebrant. Well, the New Orleans Museum of Art is 75 years old, and instead of candles, there are 75 cakes to mark the occasion. It's called a birthday bash, and the cakes are in competition for awards. There are two categories, the best museum-related cake and the most original cake, which can be anything that relates to the museum. For the chefs, there will be two tickets to Jamaica and a place to stay there, and that will be given by Brennan's Travel and Eastern Airlines. And then there will be tickets for dinner in New Orleans for the next runners up. <laughs> and what would be a party without music? The musical entertainment for this party provided by the Navy Steel Drum Band. Although there was a little chill in the air, the bouncy calypso rhythms played by bands warmed up the hearts of the partiers. And it may sound like Jamaica, but I guarantee you it did not feel like Jamaica out there today. Look like fun though. Yeah, sounds nice too. I love those steel drums. That's our night beat for this Sunday. Thanks for joining us. Our next news is during Good Morning America with Lori Kilgore. Now stay tuned for a Channel 8 viewpoint and have a great week. Good night, everybody. This is a Channel 8 viewpoint. Here is General Manager Steve Malden. These cargo ships are full of fish, fish that were caught here in Louisiana by local commercial fishermen. This cargo is now being sent to Japan to be processed and packaged. Louisiana leads the nation in production of seafood, nearly two million pounds caught last year alone, but we have almost no facilities to process it. The full economic potential of this vast, replenishable resource is not being realized because our seafood is shipped unprocessed to neighboring states and abroad. Louisiana must make a concerted effort to establish in-state seafood processing and marketing enterprises. Thousands of jobs could be created, jobs that would not be dependent on the sagging oil industry. 
if it takes tax breaks to encourage development of these enterprises, we would urge the legislature to take the lead and provide those breaks. It could be another step toward economic recovery for Louisiana. I'm Steve Malden. We invite viewer response. Right Viewpoint, WVOE Channel 8, New Orleans.